Good afternoon. It's Thursday, the 10th of December, 2009, and the market's closed. Uh, we had a gap higher today and then just a lot of choppy action. Uh, seems to be really the, the case whenever we get a gap lately. Uh, so we had uh, the gap higher and then the market traded in a pretty narrow range right up to that uh, 111.10 uh, or so and uh, we did test the 110.50 and it held so for now we're back to the middle of this uh, or back above the middle of the, uh, uh, the the trading range that we're in and we're also holding above that five day moving average. What I was mentioning yesterday uh, in yesterday's video was that I was uh, outlining a scenario of gapping up and then pulling back and then rallying. We started to kind of look like we were going to do that but the market just didn't follow through after that um, and I think part of the reason for that as I'd said on the earlier video is because um, we had run into the um uh, daily R2 up in this area. So R2 uh, was at 110.92 basically, and that's where uh, there there was uh, uh, you know some supply found I guess today. So uh, we're back to the middle of this uh, range that continues to plague this market. Uh, 111.80 on the upside and uh, 109 on the downside. So uh, we're back to the middle of it again, and um, you know today we had. Uh, uh, bullish action basically because we closed higher obviously we held above the uh, recent range and we did have 1800 stocks up for 1200 stocks declining so uh, there was broad participation and um, for me it was a frustrating day I'll show you why in a moment but uh, you know the 10 minute time frame again we you know as long as we can hold I think this uh, close above 110.25 let's just call it um, right down here this is 110.20 one, one let's say uh, if we can close above 110.20 uh, then I think that we'll be set up okay for next week ideally it would be better to, to see if we could close above this five day moving average so uh, we're going to be replacing these prices um, so you know initially the you know we're going to be replaced tomorrow morning it's going to be like this so it'll be coming down but uh, if we just kind of close in the same area then uh, the five-day moving average will flatten out and if we close above uh, basically these levels then uh, we'll have that five-day moving average starting to advance a little bit but uh, as far as upward uh, levels of resistance right now we've got a little bit of supply found today at 111.15 uh, then 111.55 and of course 111.80 is the bigger number. The NASDAQ uh, did hold on to the majority of its gains as well. We had seen that uh, this uh, that the NASDAQ got above its midpoint uh, two days ago and held above uh, that. Uh, yesterday we got above the, the, the five day moving average today. It was the same thing, gap higher in here. Uh, we fell short of the R2. I thought we were going to kind of run for that but uh, it, it fell short. Closed near the lows for the day and below the daily VWAP so uh, that's not the best sign but uh, even a pullback down towards uh, 44 would would I think still be okay for this market if we if we were to pull back to 44 uh, and find support near that five-day moving average and then push through this uh, 44.50 and of course the uh, the the levels uh, the highs for the year are just uh, just ahead of 44.70 the Russell was the uh, what was frustrating me and I had gotten involved uh, in hindsight, a little too aggressively in terms of share size in the uh, uh, by going to the TNA when when this when it, when basically did did a whole bunch of nothing here. Um, back to the daily time frame. Just let's start out there. Um, we are still holding above these uh, 10, 20, and 50 day moving average. They're all kind of holding in together in the same area and uh, above support. You know, recent support that is at uh, 59, 20. Uh, five area so we came down and tested that 5930 really um, we came down and tested that late in the day uh, initially we got the gap higher above the five-day moving average kind of what I was hoping for and then it looked like it was gonna go right here at uh, uh, when it got above sixty dollars and twenty cents so I had I had been premature actually and tweeted that I'd been involved I think right around in here is where I got uh, involved the first time I was thinking all right this time it's going to push up through the daily VWAP because we had that uh, higher or low um, I got shaken out there I got shaken out here and I got shaken out there once again and got some bad fills actually down in in this area so um, I traded too heavily and uh, uh, in a in in a leveraged position as well, which uh, you know these things move very quickly. The TNA, um, so but you know especially if you have share size and you're le in a leveraged product, it's just a a bad uh, bad recipe. And and um, I was the uh, recipient of that today in there. Um, 
the uh, so so anyways the the Russell let's go back to the uh, IWM Russell we want to see it close tomorrow above 59.25 ideally we'd like to get it back up above 60 and that five day moving average that would really put it in a better spot for this uh, um, thesis I've been talking about of of the the uh, the Russell breaking out to uh, uh, go on and challenge these highs I still think that's a possibility uh, today was disappointing action the volume wasn't real heavy but um, um, we got to look at this thing and say, you know, we really probably need to clear $60.50. Uh, but tomorrow, I'd like to see it close above uh, $60 a share would be good. Break, you know, below 59.25, then we've got uh, 58.75, and then we're just not really looking too good um, below that. So let's let's see, you know, if if this level breaks, then we'll look at 58.75 and 58.50, and and. That's something we don't want to see happen uh, if if you want to be bullish this market. Otherwise, it just seems as though maybe they're, they're going to sell it off. The uh, semiconductors held up real well today. They were down six cents, and you can see that this tight consolidation continues. Uh, this market did gap higher and then kind of chopped around just like the rest of the markets, um, but holding on to the majority of its gains in a nice uh, healthy uptrend. Uh, so you got to be encouraged with that. And the financials continue to look terrible on the daily time. Frame. They they look like they should just uh, drop down quickly down towards that 1380 level, uh, you know 13 you know first first to 14 and 1380. Um, but 1420 seems to continue to bring these well does uh, continue to show support for this market. We came down to about 1422 I think was today's low and um, it hasn't broken down. If the market can get back above 1440 and close above that, I think that would give the short sellers something to think about over the weekend so hopefully we can get above 1440 and um, you know if the banks though if they break down through that 1420 level it's gonna uh, I think uh, ruin the confidence of, of uh, a lot of participate participants in in the S&P 500 and uh, that that could lead to to broader sell-off so although I'm not trading the financials I think you want to keep a, a close eye on it maybe have an alert set for 1422 is that where I have one uh, maybe set an alert for 1438 just to see if we're getting back up through those levels uh, this market kind of uh, flirted with its daily VWAP all day but stayed below the daily VWAP and by the way the S&P 500 was just uh, you know again back and forth above and below that that uh, volume weighted average price so uh, frustrating action in the stocks as I'd mentioned earlier we got stopped out of our short in AXS me gapped up uh, they gave us no reason to get involved I had said that if you had been involved uh, over here that um, I think that I said you wanted to put your stop here I don't I don't remember uh, I should have reviewed that but I, I think I said that if you, you got it back involved above the daily VWAP that your stop should go here so if you did get involved on a secondary um, entry then it should have been stopped out with a small loss and mosaic uh, didn't you know it gapped up and this this stock is another reason of frustration for me today uh, I had gotten involved um, right here and uh, lost a little bit of money in there so this is a, I think this is three or four days in a row <laughs> that I've lost money in MOS so this thing's got my number and I don't know whether I'm being uh, stubborn or if I'm being persistent because the daily time frame still looks really nice here but uh, you know if, if it's not participating on the shorter term time frames the, the daily time frame really doesn't even matter too much um, I had mentioned earlier uh, that uh, the remaining shares of FMCN I had sold at 1605 near the open I failed to get back involved I know some of you are still holding it it's a great breakout trade uh, continuing to rally here and in, in the weekly time frame really looks good so congratulations for those of you who are holding it uh, we also did get stopped out of seed seed as um, uh, I forgot who it was I don't have uh, Twitter up uh, someone mentioned though it's kind of looking like um, uh, the other uh, stock that we we're looking at which was Quilty uh, Quilty you know I, I've said needs to get this five-day moving average flattened out and then take out the uh, prior high right near here um, and uh, anyway seed probably the same thing we need that five-day moving average to flatten out and then it takes out probably 1160 or so um, I would still keep this one on the on the list we, we got stopped out for a small uh, loss today but keep an eye on this uh, uh, 
you know for tomorrow and in, in today's action was you know right on the open I as I said uh, I did get involved I, I took a small loss but uh, you know a lot of a lot of times if you wait that first 10 15 minutes uh, then you're not going to get involved in those as well but uh, it seems like I made a lot of mistakes today um, anyways it's it's a, it, it also seems like an easy market to make mistakes in um, just because of all the uh, the back and forth um, you know, lack of follow through in so many things. Uh, other watch list ideas I'm not going to review right now. Um, I will be having another video with just watch list ideas for tomorrow and uh, um, some of the questions at, uh, that you have sent into 1bshannon at uh, gmail.com. So if you have general market questions, send them there. I don't have a lot of questions in there, so uh, uh, that's a good thing uh, because your, your questions will be answered in a more timely uh, basis unless I get a whole flood of them all at once.